Hello everybody, welcome to the class. We are going to wait just a few minutes to wait for the rest of the people to come to the class. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Osmin. Welcome to the class. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Guadalupe. Welcome to the class. Thank you. Hello, good night. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. We're waiting just a few minutes for the rest of the people to join their class. Well, I am in Santa Ana and right now it is raining cats and ducks. So let's hope everything goes well. Yes, teacher, it's raining very strong. That is true. So the good thing is that at night we're going to sleep very nice. <laughs> yes. Good. Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. Today is our third class, so it's very nice. The topic of today is going to be kind of interesting and well, the first thing that we always do is to check about the platform, of course. So, okay, so this is the platform. Today is the class number uh, three. Yesterday we made a class number two and the class is already there. If you want to see yourself, so you're gonna be there on TV. Remember that we have the the question already there so you can go and participate and you need to do the exercise 1.5 so it's uh, in this kind of exercises remember that is very very important to avoid spaces blank spaces period that are not necessarily things like that so because one space one letter that is not correct uh, one uh, symbol is going to cause the, uh, the text or the answer not to be correct. It doesn't mean that the answer is not correct, but it means that something is wrong there. So please try to remember that one when we are doing the exercise number 1.5. And this is just five questions uh, about the grammar we are gonna check today, okay? That is very, very important. Okay, so we are going to check the attendance. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. For you is the 101 today, Ana Selmi. Okay, teacher. Thank you. Good. Carmen Jasmine Lopez Martinez. Presente. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Present. José Ernesto Osorio Morán. Present. Carla, okay, good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Osmin Baire Solórzano. 
Presidente Jerry, good evening. Good evening. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present, good evening. Good evening. Sandra Carolina Romero Ramírez. Good night, teacher. Hello. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Present, teacher. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Good. Walter Mauricio Morales Araujo. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Present teacher. Good. Zulma Rosaura Lopez Garcia. Present. Good. Wilfredo Guardado Rivera. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de María Carballo Ugarte. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara Sánchez. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltran. Okay. Perfect, so we are going to start the class of today. Today we are going to start with a little bit of grammar, actually. So here we go. Okay, so we're going to check about reporter speech. Okay, so let's see. Susana, could you please read the introduction? Okay, teacher. Um, with the, the word in this part? Yeah, that's one, yeah. Okay, the word meaning of report speech is indirect speech. In other words, it is the indirect the indirect way of transferring a sentence established in any period to others. The moment of occurrence of the event can be in the past, present, or future, as well in in the time interval when it was told to someone someone else. At the same time, is the event or after it? Very good, perfect, Susana. So let's analyze what is reported speech. So the word meaning of reported speech is indirect speech. It's indirect because we are going to say something that other person said, okay? That's why it's indirect because it's not something that I say, it's something that anybody else say. So in other words, it is the indirect way of transferring a sentence established in any period to others. So we're saying what others say. The moment of occurrence of the event can be in the past, present, or future, as well as in the time interval when it was told to someone else. At the same time as the event or after it. So it can be in all the tenses. So here, in this part, it's very, very important that you understand the tenses in English. So if you understand simple present tense, simple past, present perfect, past perfect, present continuous, simple past, not a problem, okay? If you still have some problems with the tenses, this is the moment to ask questions first or to go and practice about these tenses, okay? So the first question that I have for you is, do you understand what is reported speech? What is that? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay, good. Uh, okay, reference speech for me is when another people says a word, and I, 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 I said, for example, my my boss says tomorrow everybody works. 
Yeah. Very good. So that is direct speech. Very good. And I'm going to present you this, the grammar in different ways. Okay, so everything is clear at the end of the class. Uh, this is very important. It's something that is very common, very useful, uh, if we understand that in a very good way. So let's check the first example. It says simply present. So the direct speech is, I like frozen yogurt. So the direct speech is, for example, also mean, also mean says, I like frozen yogurt. Yeah. So he says, I like frozen yogurt. But I, I will transform, I will do magic today. And we're going to transform the direct speech into indirect speech or reported speech. So in this case, she said, because it's a woman, she said that is in parentheses because you can use it or you cannot use it. So in both ways, is correct, okay? She said that she liked, look at this. She said that she liked frozen yogurt. So this is the first one. The first one is if Susana says, I like frozen yogurt in present, in simple present, their reported speech is going to be in simple past so i like frozen yogurt in di in reported speech or in the expression is going to say she said that she liked liked frozen yogurt so we change the verb because we change the tense of the sentence that is very important if you use present here if you say uh, she said that she liked frozen yogurt. It is not correct. And when you go to New York, the gringos are not going to understand you. So it's very important that you remember this. So do you have a question about the first one? Uh, uh, past simple? Uh, use uh, that always? That is optional. You can use it or you cannot use it. That is optional. So it can be, she say she liked frozen yogurt. So that is correct. Only, More. only, only uh, use uh, past verb. That is the important part. So if the direct speech is in present, in simple present, we're going to transform that into reported speech into past. So simple present goes into simple past. Always, all the time, okay? Wilfredo. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. I, I have a question. Go ahead. When, when we use the present, Simple, all, uh, it is uh, all there, it is going to be in present. But in, in simple past, we have to use, um, for example, the, these sentences. She says, yeah, she uh -huh. likes. We have to use uh, mandatory use uh, the past of the verb. Yeah, so this is the. This is the deal, okay? If the direct speech is in simple present, when we transform that into reported speech, the verb is going to be in simple past all the time, always. Okay, thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Another thing that is important is the verb that we are going to use here. So we are going to use said or told. She told me, to do something, for example, okay? She said in past because she said that already. So if the action passed, of course, it's going to be in past. So in this case, it's going to be in past, but the verb, the main verb is going to be in simple past. Why? Because the first one, the direct speech is in simple present tense. So please remember, simple present transforms 
to report a speech into simple past all the time. Do you have any questions about this? I'm going to show you more examples later on, of course. I know that sometimes in grammar, I explain and you are like, oh my goodness, I'm not sure, right? But if I present you more examples, of course you are going to understand better, okay? But if you have questions, of course you can shoot me. In this case, in this case, teacher is different in related to the Spanish. Uh, Spanish because when in Spanish we we use the report speech. Uh, we conserve the the time in the main there. That is true, Anasami, and that's why this is very important because sometimes when we are learning English, we think in Spanish and we speak in English. But if we say the words, we, if we don't use the correct tense, a person that doesn't speak Spanish is not going to understand. I mean, if you say something, I will understand because I speak Spanish. I understand what is the idea. But if you go there to New York and you say, she says she like frozen yogurt, the other person comes to be like, what? What do you say? Could you please repeat? Only with that simple thing, they don't understand. So that's why this is very important. Okay, do you have any other question with the first figure? We're going to provide more examples, of course. I know this kind of grammar we need to, to practice first and, first and check some things, okay? Teacher, Go ahead. Always um, a simple, present simple, change uh, pre, uh, simple past? Yes, if- Always. Yeah, if the direct speech is in present, in simple present, the reported speech is going to be in simple past. So that is only the first one. Let's check the next one, present continuous. So look at this, the direct speech says, I am living in Paris. So the reported speech says, she's, he said, you were going to keep here in simple past. He said he was living in Paris. So again, we change the verb. We change the tense. So we change from present continuous or present progressive. We change it to past continuous only by changing the verb to be. Okay. So present continuous in direct speech, in reported speech, past continuous. So that is a very good example. I am living in Paris. He said, he said in past, simple past, that part is a simple past. He said he was living in Paris. Remember that you can use that, that is optional, right? For the, that, we're going to check some other rules in the future. But he said he was living in Paris. So remember, present continuous. We are going to change the present continuous to past continuous. Do you have any questions with the second option? <laughs> no, in English, we can speak no, English. No, no, no. no. <laughs> okay, no, go ahead. No, 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 el mm -hmm. ser no no ese mi ahí donde me confundo the problem is that you are thinking in spanish but this is not spanish okay ese, ese es el problema que todavía pienso en español no good 
that's why you need to practice English. And that's why, uh, I mean, I would say this in Spanish as well. Por eso es muy importante de que cuando hayan dudas, se saquen esas dudas y luego que entendemos cómo va la gramática, usarlo, ¿verdad? Porque a veces sí lo entendemos, decimos, sí, sí, sí me quedó claro, pero no lo uso en un año, entonces ahí ya vienen los problemas. So, le voy a explicar este en español para que quede un poco claro. Acá en el direct speech, en, el, en lo que dijo la persona directamente sería, yo estoy viviendo en París. Entonces, digamos que Wilfredo me dijo a mí, yo estoy viviendo en París. Yes. Entonces yo vengo y le cuento el chambre ahí a, a Ada Patricia. Mire, eh, Wilfredo, él me dijo, este es his saying, él me dijo que él estaba viviendo en París. Yo ya no le puedo decir, mire, dice Wilfredo que estoy viviendo en París, porque entonces soy okay. yo el que está viviendo en París. That's why it's not correct. Por eso no es correcto. Porque si yo digo, dice Wilfredo que estoy viviendo en París, Ah, bueno, entonces, ¿quién está viviendo en París? ¿Usted o él? Correcto. Por sure. eso, and that's why the people in English, they don't understand sometimes. I have more questions. Yes, I have another question, teacher. Sorry. Go, go ahead. But, um, for example, I, I can say, uh, my friend told me yep. that he was leaving. Yeah, that is correct. You can say, said or told. We're going to check that later on when we're going to use said and when we're going to uh, use told so by now we're going to check only in the tenses okay okay good okay. very good but it's correct you can say he said he told um he expresses i mean any word that is related to say something any verb like that you can use it but the most common is said or told the key is um, the, the main key is identify the the structure structure of the direct sentences for change in the report speech because there are different uh, forms. Uh, for example, this simple change to pass the uh, present continue to past continuous. The, what is the, other? the past, the past perfect teacher. Yeah, we're both. going to check. Yeah, but we, it's like that. So that's why, as Anna Selmi says, here at this point, it's very important that you know, that you understand the tenses, the structure that you see a verb and you say, oh, that is simple past. So then I'm going to transform into this. But if you don't know, if you don't know when is simple present, when is simply a uh, present continuous, then we have a problem, right? Because the first thing that you need to do is to identify the direct speech tense. So for example, here I am living in Paris, I'm living present continuous then I know that I have to change that into past continuous. He said he was living in Paris. So that is very important. Go ahead. No es así. Yo le digo así para que se entienda. No, no, es que yo lo entendí más fácil así. Porque, o sea, vaya, alguien dice, a mí me gusta el coffee, café. Mm -hmm. Entonces yo tengo que ponerle a él, dice que le gusta, entonces cambiarle la, la, la forma. Exacto. Entonces siento que es un poquito más, bueno, para mí es más fácil así. O yo sí, sé por... que tengo que hacer como chambre. Ajá. Sí, por eso a veces yo ahí meto ahí los chistes, pero van siempre con, con esta situación para que entendamos, ¿verdad? Entonces quizás lo que tiene que quedar claro en este punto es que el direct speech es cuando usted habla. Si yo, por ejemplo, estoy aquí y digo, I like heavy metal music. Entonces ya no puede venir usted a decir, él dice que me gusta, porque entonces soy yo el que lo está diciendo. Él dice que a él le gusta, le gustaba, le ha gustado el tiempo, ya lo vamos a ver. ¿verdad? Pero en in English, you are going to transform that. It's not going to be the same tense. It's going to be a tense behind. So that is a key. If it's in present, it's going to be in past. If it's Maybe. in past, uh -huh. 
teacher, maybe it's better to understand that we are talking in reported speech is when we are talking to someone else in the third person. Yeah. That is another key. So I'm speaking with Wilfredo and then Wilfredo goes away and then I speak with Anaselmi that is a third party, it's a third person. Yeah. And I'm speaking about what Wilfredo said to me. So that is it. So I'm speaking with Wilfredo and then I reproduce, I repeat what he yeah, said he to Anna Salmi, mm -hmm. but it's not mm -hmm. my idea, it's Wilfredo's idea. So that is important. Of course, grammar is important because, I mean, the idea on how to understand things is really important, but whenever you speak, you need to use the correct tense. That is very important. Okay, let's move on to the other one, simple past. Aha, uh -huh, this is different. So if the direct speech is in simple past, for example, I bowed a judged. Oh, that would be good. I bowed a judged. The reported speech is going to be like this. She said that she had bowed a judged. So we are going to transform that into past perfect. She had bowed a judged. So is another tense behind, okay? We always go back. So again, simple past in direct speech is going to transform into past perfect. I bowed a judged. She said she had bowed a judged. She had bowed. That is past perfect. So any questions with this one? Clear as horchata. Teacher, it's okay. In the cambio, cambio and the will, uh, wall. Ya, ya vamos a llegar a eso. Ah, okay, Let's go okay, one by okay. one. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. You will, we'll go one by one so we understand. Actually, I'm going to present you more ex examples just for you to understand that, okay? I know this is very important. The problem here is that we're going to see all the tenses. All the tenses are involved here and you need to know what is the difference between one and the other one. So for the present perfect, the direct speech is like, for example, I haven't seen Jack, that is present perfect. For the reported speech, it's going to be again, uh, past perfect. She said that she hadn't seen Jack, okay? So again, we're going to change the tense into the next one, into the, not the next, but the one behind, okay? So we change the tenses. Okay, so for the past perfect, here, because we don't have something that is before the, the past perfect, so we are going to stay the same. So for the past perfect, I can say, I had taken Spanish lessons before. For the reported speech is going to be, she said that she had taken Spanish lessons before. This is the only one that is going to be the same by now, okay? So this is the same. Why? Because there is no tense before the past perfect. There is no other tense. So in this case, the same, past perfect. I had taken Spanish lessons before. She said she had taken Spanish lessons before. Remember that the rules apply for the negatives, but we're going to check the negatives later on. Okay, for will, you remember that the past of will is world, right? When we are going to speak in future in the past, we use world. So again, the direct speech with will is, I will see you tomorrow. And in the reported speech, we're going to change will for world. He say that he will see me tomorrow. Okay, will for world. That will be it. So the only one that we don't change is the past perfect because there is no other tense behind. For the rest, we can change it. 
Do you have any question by now? It's going to be very interesting when we practice speaking, right? Ah, there is going to be fantastic. Not yeah. yet. Go ahead. Uh, the use of will is in the future. Yeah, when we are, when the direct speech, when somebody says something with will in the, for the future, we in the report speech, we are going to change that for would. Okay. Right. That will be the rule. Teacher. Go ahead. Disculpe, voy a decir, porque no sé cómo decirlo en inglés. En fin. En este caso dice que eh, alguien dijo, ¿verdad? Entonces, cuando, cuando vamos a, en, a decir lo que dijo, ¿también tenemos que ponerlo en pasado? That is always in past, porque ya lo dijo, ya pasó, ¿verdad? So, uh -huh. she said, he said, we said, they said. And sometimes the verb is going to be different, just as Wilfredo said. Sometimes we are going to use told. He told me, he told us, so that is possible. But by now we're going to, to keep with the say, okay? In past, that is going to be in simple past. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah, in the reporter speech, you see that there are two verbs. Okay, for example, she said that she liked frozen yogurt. Question for you, what is the main verb, the principal verb in the reporter's speech sentence? Liked, liked. Liked, very good. She said it's something that is like a compliment, but it goes before. But the main verb is going to be she liked. And the other one was living. And the other one had bowed. So? That is going to be the main, the principal verb of the sentence. Okay, uh, I have another explanation with different examples here. Okay, so it's going to be kind of the same. Simple present, she always wears a coat. Remember the rules of the simple present. She always wears a coat. So that is going to go to simple past. She said, that he she always wore a coat simple past so present goes to simple past any questions with that this is a different example a different way the same happens with the present continuous i'm looking for my keys in the past continuous uh, that we're going to have for the reporter speech is going to be like, she say that she was looking for her keys. Okay. So present continuous goes to past continuous. Present perfect goes to past perfect. So she has written three letters for her friend. He said, that that is optional or he said she had written three letters for her friend had written three. go ahead yeah that is optional you can use uh, it or you don't use it that is up to you okay okay good good so Clean remember yeah, good. <laughs> so uh, he said that, or, or not that, she had written three letters for her friend. For the simple past, it's going to be like, uh, my friend gave me a bar of chocolate. Also is going to go to past perfect. He said that his friend had given, had given him a bar of chocolate. So it's going to be simple past, goes to past, perfect. And the one with will is going to go with would. That will be it. For example, I will finish my report in two days. He said he will finish his report in two days. He will finish his report in two days. So I, I, in this chart, I guess it's, a little bit more clear the way that we're going to change, okay? 
Any questions by now? No questions, amazing. Uh, let me check. We have more. <laughs> can, we can use can <laughs> for report speech. So if we use can, we're going to change that to could. So for example, I can speak English. She said that she could speak English. That will be it. She said that she could speak English. That is it. For me, we're going to change may to might. I may invite them to dinner. She said that she might invite them to dinner. So may goes to might. Must changes to had to, had in past, okay? For example, I must go to the bank and get some money. She say that she has to go to the bank and get some money. And have to, remember that these are for obligations, right? Have to is going to go also to had to. For example, I have to submit this assignment by 3 p.m. tomorrow, obligation, right? She say that she had to submit this assignment by 3 p.m. tomorrow, had. So this goes to had to. Questions, my friends. Anybody? Always. Always you see can uh, for cool. Yeah. That is the rule. Change can for cool in reported speech, remember. King. King? I'm sorry. When when you Change when you change direct speech into reported speech. So everything that we're checking here is direct speech when you transform into reported speech. Okay. Wilfredo. Uh, okay, teacher. And when we use must, I must go to the bank and get some money. Mm -hmm. Why? And when we have to use how to, the verb, it is in present. Uh, which verb? Go. Uh, no, had is in past, had. Yes, had. Um, if, if, in this case, if I have, I use had, the verb is going to be in, in present. Uh, you, you're talking about the reported speech for must. Is that the one? Yes. Yeah, so when we use must, because there is no past for must, then we need to change that to had to in past. Um, okay. That will be the reported speech. I'm okay. Okay, good. Any other question? Recordemos que todo esto es para reported speech. Todo lo que estamos viendo y todo lo que vamos a ver este día, en excepción del libro, que lo vamos a ver más adelante, es para reported speech. O sea, cuando decimos, él dijo que, y ahí, Es que cambiamos, ¿verdad? El primero es cuando la persona lo dice en vivo y a todo color. El segundo es cuando yo vengo y le cuento a otra persona lo que esta otra persona dijo. Ahí lo tengo que cambiar. ¿Cómo lo voy a cambiar? Ahí está en pantalla las reglas. The rules are in front of you. So, you need to remember. That's the only thing. In this case, teacher, in the report speech, when we change the the time of the bear, um, the expression is literally that the, for example, in, when we, in Spanish, we express the, 
it, it, for example, the, the example the Wilfredo, she must, uh, sorry, Wilfredo say, um, he have to go to the bank. That is um, mm -hmm. literally uh, the, the sentence Wilfredo say. Yeah, we can say that. Wilfredo said that he had to go to the bank. Yeah. Okay. That will be it. very good. In in this case, uh, will will repetitive uh, he. Yeah, the thing is that the subject can change. I mean, that depends on the way that you use it. If you are talking about the doctor, you can say the doctor said that I had to had in past. I had to take the pills every eight hours. Okay. So okay. we can say the doctor, we can say the robot, we can say the world, we can say depending on the subject, the subject can change. That, I mean, is not relevant to be honest. Any other question? Okay, let's check something in these same examples. Okay, we have checked this in affirmative. Oh, for example, what will be the negative of she always wears a coat? Do you remember the negative for that one? Wore. She, uh-huh. She always wore a coat. No, negative, this, she always wears a coat. That specifically oh. in a negative, how is it gonna be? She always didn't wear a coat. Mm -hmm. She, she always. Never, she she, she never wears a coat. Oh. She doesn't. She doesn't. She doesn't. No. Very good. She doesn't. She <laughs> doesn't always wear noise a coat. Remember the rules. Recordemos mm -hmm. que esto también puede ser negativo, puede ser pregunta, whatever. Entonces acá, por eso estamos recordando las reglas, ¿verdad? Por eso les preguntaba cómo es el negativo de she always wears a coat. And that is, as Wilfredo say, she doesn't always wear a coat. Ah, the question now is how is the negative of this one in the reporter's speech? He said she always wears a coat. She didn't always. Good. That is yeah. She oh, uh, yeah, he said she didn't always wear a coat. Where look, the mm -hmm. rules are very important. He said she didn't always wear, no wore, wear, because we use didn't in past the auxiliary, didn't wear a coat. In my end, those rules are important. I'm looking for my keys. How is that in negative? I'm, I'm not, I'm huh? not looking, I'm not looking for my kids. That is it. I'm not looking for my kids. And she says she was looking for her kids. How is going to be that in negative? She said she wasn't looking she, for his kids. She wasn't. Very good. She says she wasn't looking for her kids. Good. Now let's go with the present perfect. She has written three letters for her friend. How is going to be that in negative? She has to written three letters for her friend. Very good. That is it. She hasn't written three letters for her friend. And he said that she had written three letters for her friend. How is going to be that in negative? She didn't. Haven't. Hadn't, yeah. So he oh, said, okay. yeah, because the, yeah, okay. the auxiliary is this one, right? So he said that, <laughs> hey, we're very happy today. He said that she <laughs> hadn't, hadn't Hi. written three letters for her friend. <clears throat> hadn't, very good. My friend gave me Perdón, a bar. Me reí por <laughs> no, don't don't worry. In English, please. No Spanish here. We don't speak Spanish. <laughs> so in simple parts, it says, "My friend gave me a bar of chocolate." How is Excuse going to be me for the new? 
Okay, don't worry, that's fine. If you're happy, we're happy. So, my friend gave me a bar of chocolate. How is it going to be that in negative? My friend um, didn't give me a bar of chocolate. Very good. My friend didn't give me give me a bar of chocolate. So rules are important. Mm -hmm. And the other one, the past perfect, that is easy. He said his friend had given him a bar of chocolate. How is it going to be that in negative? He said his friend hadn't given him a bar of chocolate. That is correct. He said his friend hadn't given him bar of chocolate. Good. Uh, I will finish my report in two days. Who is going to be that in negative? That is easy. Teacher, one question. Is not right say he didn't say? Mm. It's not report speech in this case. It's report speech and it's possible, yes. He didn't say? Yeah. In the the speech in the same time or oh, the same same time of the birth. It's, yeah. So it's not no no normal or no how do you uh, say common to use. Actually it's common whenever you want to clarify on something. For example, you can say he didn't say his friend had given him a bar of chocolate. He said that his friend had given him uh, a tar of milk, for example. Okay. So when you clarify, you can say that one. He didn't say that. No, he said mm -hmm. this. So in that way, it's possible. Okay. Thank you. Good, good, good. So the next one says, I will finish my report in two days. How is going to be that in negative? I will not finish my report that in is it. two days. I won't finish my report in two days. Good, nice. And uh, he say he will finish his report in two days in negative. He said that he wouldn't finish his report in two days. Good. He said that he wouldn't finish his report in two days. So maybe the problem is when we're speaking in fluency, right? When you're saying, yeah, he said that he wouldn't finish his report today because we're, uh, I mean, when somebody is speaking very fast, you need to listen, right? You need to check so you understand what you're talking about, what somebody's talking about, okay? Good, uh, let's continue with the negatives we need to remember. Can, I can't speak English, why would be that in negative? That's easy. I cannot speak English. I cannot speak English. Good. The other one is very easy as well. She said that she could speak English. So how is it going to be that in negative? She said that she couldn't speak English. Good. She said that she couldn't speak English. Good. Uh, remember the pronunciation is could and. Some people says could and. No E. Couldn't. Couldn't. So it's cool and. Right. Okay. I may invite them to dinner. How's going to be that in negative? In present, right? Uh, in negative. I may invite them to dinner. I not? don't may. Uh, actually, invite it's, them to dinner. Uh, yeah, it's last other person said there. I, I may not. May. I no, may I, not. I may not. I may not invite them to dinner. May. You remember the maybe is for, for possibility. Maybe yes, maybe not. Okay, I might. She say that she might invite them to the dinner. How is it going to be that in negative? She say she might not invite them to the dinner. Very good. She said that she might not invite them to the dinner. Very good. Uh, must. I must go to the bank and get some money. How's it going to be that in negative? I, 
I must not go to the bank and get some money. Very good. I mustn't. I must not go to the bank and get some money. And who's going to be the other one? She said she had to go to the bank and get some money. She said that she hadn't to go to the bank and get some money. Uh -huh. Here we have something. What do you think, people? She said that she had to go to the bank and get some money in negative. She said she hadn't to go mm -hmm. to the bank and get some money. Uh -huh. Okay, no. it, let's analyze. She's in her. She, uh -huh. No. And she say she had she not. Had to, she had not. She said she had. Okay. Uh -huh. okay, let's analyze this. <laughs> so in this case, the verb is how to go, look, go. Mm. Remember when. that in the past, in the when. past perfect, we use had, uh, for example, had as the auxiliary and the other verb is in past participle, had gone. But here we have this verb go in present. So the negative of this one is going to be, she said, she said that she didn't have in present to go to the bank and get some money. Because this had is simple past. It's not past perfect. In this case, the had is no auxiliary teacher. It's not it's auxiliary. Name. Yeah, it's, it's like, there. yeah, it's because it's like have to, I have to go. It's an obligation, but it's not an auxiliary. So th that's why rules are important, as I was saying. So it had to go. When we see go in present, we know that this had is not an auxiliary. We use had as an auxiliary with other verb in past participle. So in had the, gone. In the past, in the past perfect. Yeah, in the past, past perfect. Past perfect. Yeah. We use had and then the verb in the other verb in past participle. Had gone, has seen, has taken. But in this case, it says had to go in present, go. So the negative then is going to be, she say she didn't have to go to uh -huh. the bank and get some money. Uh -huh. She didn't have to go. She didn't have uh -huh, to, to go. go to the bank and get it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Only all only auxiliary did. Yeah, because we remember that in the simple past, when we change that into negative, we're going to use the auxiliary in negative and the verb in present. So here. No chance. Yeah, it's going to be in present, okay? In the affirmative, of course, it's going to be in simple past. Good. Let's check the other one. Aha. Uh -huh. I have to submit this assignment by 3 p.m. tomorrow. How is going to be that in negative? I haven't. To some, to some, some, something meet this assignment by 3 p.m. tomorrow. In no. this case, it's the same. In have two is the main verb is no auxiliary in okay. this case i i don't have to perfect that is this, it i don't have to submit this assignment by 3 p.m tomorrow i don't because have is in simple present so i don't have have my not, mind mm -hmm. have to uh, it haven't <laughs> was it was auxiliary in, I, in my I have to, but I, in uh, have to is main, is yeah. main there. Yeah, the thing is that have to, we use that for obligations. When you yeah. say, I have to mm -hmm. go to work tomorrow, you don't mm -hmm. want to go, but uh, you have to go, right? So, and uh, in these situations, we also use other verb. We have to and another verb, a second verb. So the main verb yes. is 
submit. Have to is only the obligation. Submit yeah. is the main verb. But you are right. In this case, the auxiliary is because the, the sentence is, the, the time of the sentence is present. We use the auxiliary do and does. Exactly. I don't have to submit this assignment by 3 p.m. tomorrow. Very good. That's why we're analyzing one by one, you know? So those little things don't escape, right? Good, good. And the last one says, she said she had to submit this assignment by 3 p.m. tomorrow. Uh-huh, who's going to be that in negative? She said she didn't have to submit this assignment by 3 p.m. tomorrow. Very good. She said that she didn't have in present. It's the other level of the complication, teacher, because <laughs> only the chain the, the, in the, the first example is complicated in when you use the have to, other level complication. <laughs> <laughs> so that is what is fantastic. You know, this is, uh, we are now uh, seeing advanced grammar. This is advanced grammar. Uh, Maybe as I was telling you, the problem is when we're speaking very fast, right? When you are speaking with somebody in English and then somebody says, oh, she said that she had to go. So you need to understand, is that in present? Is that in past? Is she going to go? She didn't go. What happened, right? You need to understand that because it's important information. So by now we are, we are getting into that one. So it's like, like the, how can I say that? the explanation, right? It's going to be interesting, the practice at the end of the class. Ha, ah, that's going to be amazing. By now we're going to make a little pause because it's time for us to check the attendance. Let's see. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present teacher. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present teacher. Good. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Carmen Yasmin Lopez Martinez. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen Lopez Flores. Present teacher. Good. Jose Ernesto Osorio Morán. Present teacher. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here, teacher. Good. Osmin Baires Solorzano. Present, teacher. Good. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present, teacher. Good. Sandra Carolina Romero Ramirez. I'm here, teacher. Good. Sandra Gladys Mendez Ramirez. Present, teacher. Good. Susana Carolina Hernandez Iraeta. Present. Good. Walter Mauricio Morales Araujo. Present, teacher. Good. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Present, teacher. Good. Wilfredo Guardado Rivera. Present, teacher. Good. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present, teacher. Good. Flor de María Carballo Ugarte. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara Sánchez. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present. Very good. So let's continue. Okay. Let's continue with the explanation. I want this to be clear. So let's continue with the reported speech. So we use reported speech to tell people that somebody said or thought in the past or what happened. But be careful, tenses change only when the time and speak and speaker are different. So Simple present, as we know, goes to past simple. I work in Paris. He said he worked in Paris. 
present continuous goes to past continuous. I am working. He said he was working. Past simple goes to past perfect. I worked. He said he had worked. Past continuous goes to pe past perfect continuous. I was working. Ah, look at this. This is a new one. I was working. Ha, ha, ha. He said he had been working. That is the past perfect continuous. Nice. That is a new one. Uh, then present perfect simple goes to past perfect. I have worked. He said he had worked. Present perfect continuous goes to past perfect continuous. I have been working. He said he had been working. Past perfect, no change. I had worked. He said he had worked. That is the only one. And then we have the other one here. Past perfect, continue, no change. I have been working. He said he had been working. So we have a few new here. So for example, past continuous, I was working. That is past continuous. In the indirect speech, in the reported speech, we are going to use, he said he had been working. And the name of that one is past perfect continuous. Do you have any question about that? Past continuous goes to past perfect continuous. Past perfect. Teacher, yeah. one question is indirect speech when in the sentence use the quotation mark. Um, no, when you no. use the quotation, that is something different because you are saying okay. exactly the words that they say. Yes, literally. In this yeah. case, it's not. In that case, it's not reported speech. Yeah, that is not reported speech. In sentences, literally, in the thing when we use the quotation mark. Exactly. So that is okay. that is a different thing. Yeah. The only the case in the past perfect and past past perfect continuous no change in the in the written speech. Only two cases. Yeah, those are the two cases where you won't change anything. I had words. He said he had words. So it's going to be past perfect to past perfect. And okay. past perfect continues, past perfect continues. The reason is because there is no other tense before that one. Yeah. So it's not possible, right? Mm -hmm. That will be it. The yeah. other one that is a new one is the present perfect continues. I have been working. We're going to change that into past perfect continue. He say he had been working. So that is it. Do you, my friends, have any questions about this grammar? It's very interesting, right? Yes. Questions. This is the time for the questions. Okay, no questions. Let's check some other details. With other verbs, we checked that already. Uh, with will, it goes to will. I will work. He said he will work. Uh, can it goes with cool? I can sing. He said he could sing. Must goes to have to. I must work. He said he had to work. May goes to might. May I help you? Look at this. This is a new one. So a question. May I help you? He asked, look, the verb changes. That's the first change. He asked because it's a request. It's not say, it's a request. He asked if he might help me. If, if it's possible, right? So you can see that we're moving on to more and more examples. That's very good. Shall, ah, we haven't seen that one first. Shall will go to should. What shall I do? That is not that common to be honest with you, but exists. So what shall I do? He asks what he should do, okay? Do you have any questions on this part with other verbs? 
this class is amazing. In this case, in, in the question, in the, in the direct form, when we transform the indirect, indirect uh, we use the ask, ask, and yeah, the, the, in the question sentence, uh, transform in the normal sentence. We don't repeat the questions. No, we don't repeat the question. So it's going to be, he asked if he might help. So in this case is if, because it's a possibility, if, uh, if we use- This is reported speech teacher. This is reported yes. speech, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good. Uh, let me check. So pronouns sometimes change. So be careful. Remember, pronouns sometimes change. Say, for example, don't tell him he said. He asked me not to tell him, no change. But the other one, I like you. Mary told me, ah, he is told. Mary told me that she liked me. Can you see that? It's not him. I'm, I'm sorry, it's not me. I mean, it's going to be a different one. Mary told me that she liked me. I like you for me. Because that makes sense, right? Whenever you're speaking about one person that is the other person that you're talking about, you're going to be able to change the subject or the pronouns or the object pronouns of those. So that's going to be also very, very important. Um, and I have some other things for you. Uh, time references. Now, we need to change that to then. Today, that day. Here, there, this, that, this week, that week, tomorrow, the following or the next day, next week, the following or the next week, yesterday, the previous day or the day before that day, okay, ago, previously or before, two days ago, two days previously, or two days before, you can continue using that one. Tonight, that night. Last Saturday, the previous Saturday or the Saturday before. Next Saturday, the following Saturday, the next Saturday, the Saturday after or that Saturday. So time also is going to provide you an idea on what uh, are you talking about, okay? It's for, for you to help the other person to understand better what is going to happen or what did happen, what is happening, okay? When that is happening. So for example, let's see. For example, we can say, I will work tomorrow. He say he will work the following day or the next day. Sometimes it's possible to keep that one. If we're speaking the same day, of course it's possible to say, he say that he will work tomorrow. That is possible, okay? Depending on the situation. Okay, and about the nouns, it's also very important for you to remember. There is a little bit more here, okay? Okay, we can use these three verbs. We can use tell, we can use say, and we can use ask. We're going to use tell plus the personal object. For example, we tell some when we tell somebody something. So Tina told me to phone her. So in this case, it's told because she told me to do an action for her. When somebody is asking you to do something, so we are, you're going to use tell, in this case, told because it's not just say. Say something is like, for example, I like ice cream. Uh, she says she liked ice cream. But if I, re I tell you to do something, then you are going to use tell. So Tina told me to phone her. My sister told us not to wake her up in the morning. So not to do the action. So when an action is going to be performed, when it's an object for that verb, we're going to use the verb tell 
and not say or ask. Do you have any questions about this? Okay, the other one we're going to use say when we have say to and an object. He never say that to me. That's why we use that sometimes. So when we use tell, we are not going to use that. That is another difference in tell. So for example, Tina told me that, that is not possible. Tina told me to phone her. But when we use say, because it's an object, what we're talking about, we are going to use, it's possible to use that, okay? He never say that to me or to report. He said he was exhausted. You can say he was, he said that he was exhausted. Tom said he had done it. Tom said that he had done it. So in both ways it's possible to use that because um, you are using say in this case. So when somebody just say something, we use say. When somebody says something that you need to do as the object of, of a verb, we're going to use tell. That is the main difference. Any questions before we move on? Teacher. Yep. Eh, o sea, de que cuando se ocupa tell, eh, no es como en el español que dice, ¿qué podemos decir? Ella me dijo que. En inglés se omite, por decirlo así, el that. Yep. In English, mm. we don't use, we tell. We uh -huh. tell, we don't, because there is an, an object. I mean, there is an object for the action. She, Tina told me to phone. Look at that, to phone. Phone is a verb. My sister told us not to wake. Wake is a verb. But in the other one, he say he was exhausted, there is no other verb. So it's just saying something. So when we use say, we can use that, or we don't use it. In tell, we never use it. That would it be. It's not indistinct the use to tell and say, teacher, because no, depend of the structure of the sentence, when we use tell, the first, we need to use the pron pronoun, 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 how do you say? The pronoun. Pronoun, pronoun. The pronoun. Pronoun. If the other, never use that. Uh, yeah, you use never use that. Two. Yeah. If the other, the uh, begin with the there. It's not, uh. it's not the, the, in the, for example, Tina told me uh, it's right to say, Tina told me to uh, to to do an action, any action. The action, the bear. That is it. So the that bear. is the difference. So in this case, when we use tell or tall, it's because that person is asking you to do or not to do something. She told me to clear okay. the history browsing on my computer, for example. And the other one, you only are repeating what the other person says. She likes something, she uh, wants something. It's not, it's, a, it's not an action required. Mm -hmm. That is okay. the main one. And it's similar okay. to the last one, ask. Ask, of course, is when you request something, okay? In the first one we tell is because you are telling somebody to do or not to do something. But in ask is when you are actually requesting, do this, okay? So in the first one is like, could you please do this? And the other one is do this, please, okay? So he asked me to translate it. So that is a request. Okay. So for requests, we're going to use as. Uh, and in the questions, we're going to, uh, as we checked before, we're going to use if. Uh, ask her if she likes to. Okay. It's like a, a request again. So do you have any questions with this? Well, 
yes, yeah. I know that there is a lot of information, but it's not that complicated. Of course, we need to practice, right? Questions before we move on? <laughs> okay, uh, don't worry. I know that this is something that is, it, it looks like complicated, but it's not. Uh, we're going to see in case you didn't understand here, and we're going to watch a video about the explanation of this, just for everything to be clear, okay? So here we go. Six Minute Grammar from the BBC. Hello, welcome to Six Minute Grammar with me, Catherine. And me, Neil. Neil, I have a sandwich. It's from Finn. He said you were hungry. Really? Yeah. He said, in fact, Finn said he's hungry. Give him a sandwich. Well, that's very kind of Finn. Mm, it's delicious. And in today's programme, we're talking about reported speech. We'll be discussing why and when we use it, and we'll see how to form it. We use reported speech when we want to report something that another person said. In our example, Finn originally said... He's hungry. That's direct speech. Catherine reported the direct speech like this. Finn said you were hungry. OK, now let's look at that more closely. We need to make some grammatical changes when we report what someone else says. First, when the speaker or listener changes, we need to change the pronouns. That's right. Finn used he in direct speech to talk about Neil. He is hungry. Then Catherine told me what Finn said. Finn said you were hungry. Second change. In reported speech, we often move the tense back one step into the past. So is hungry becomes were hungry. But we don't have to change the verb tense in reported speech if the situation is generally true. Here's an example. Finn, give us a sentence, please. OK. I love cheese sandwiches. Thank you, Finn. And Neil, can you report what Finn said, please? Yes, Finn said he loves cheese sandwiches. OK, so there we don't change loves to loved because Finn loves cheese sandwiches and that's a general truth. Now, the third thing we need with reported speech is a reporting verb. Say and tell are the most common ones and we usually put them in the past tense. For example, Finn said Neil was hungry. Now let's look at how to report questions with question words like what and who. We'll hear the direct speech first from Finn, then Catherine will give us the reported speech. Uh, what's the time? Finn asked what the time was. The reporting verb comes first, then the question word, and then the reported sentence with the tense moved back. And don't forget to change the word order from question word order to statement word order. Another one, please, Finn and Catherine. Who ate the cake? He asked who'd eaten the cake. OK, now it's time to look at pronunciation. Yes, pronunciation. Some past tense forms in reported speech can be difficult to hear. In the last example, the two words who and had become who'd. Who'd. He asked who'd eaten the cake. So had is shortened to just a d sound. Listen out for the short d sound in this next example. She asked where I'd gone. So the phrase I had becomes I'd. One more time, please, Finn. She asked where I'd gone. Thank you, Finn. So watch out for contractions in reported speech. Six Minute Grammar from bbclearningenglish.com And now, are you ready? For a quiz? It's quiz time. Finn is going to say some sentences in direct speech. As you listen, decide what the correct reported speech is. Here's the first one. I've eaten my lunch. Is the reported speech A, he said he's eating his lunch, or B, he said 
he'd eaten his lunch. And the answer is B. He said he'd eaten his lunch. The present perfect changes to the past perfect. OK, next one, please, Finn. I go to work by bus. Is the reported speech A. Finn said he goes to work by bus. Or B. Finn said he's going to work by bus. And it's A. Finn said he goes to work by bus. OK, and here's the last one. Uh, where are my glasses? Is it A, he asked where were his glasses? Or B, he asked where his glasses were? And the right answer is B, he asked where his glasses were. Now, before we go, there's just enough time for a top tip. With the reporting verb tell, we say who the person is talking to. For example, Finn told me he's going to pay for lunch today. Wow. And when we use the reporting verb say, we don't say who the person is talking to. So this next sentence is wrong. Finn said me he was going to pay for lunch today. But this one is correct. Finn said he was going to pay for lunch today. So that's reported speech. There's more about this on our website at bbclearningenglish.com. Very easy. OK, so a few things that are new in the video is that when we're talking about something that is a general truth, we don't change the verb, OK? So for example, when you say, I love pizza, so I can say, Michelle said she loves pizza in simple present tense, when it's a general truth. But if she says, for example, um, I will go tomorrow, ah, and that, that is not a general truth. So I can say, Michelle says she will go tomorrow. So we need to change that one. The rest, I believe, is like the same that we chat. But uh, for example, teacher, uh, my boss say uh, you need to finish the report tomorrow. In this case, is uh, report speech. You need to change. I need to change. Yeah. Because when you see the, the truth in the for in the sample, the I love the sandwich. Don't change the the word because is is true too, no? I mean everything is truth. The problem is with the other is a general truth. It's not something that you will do tomorrow. It's not something that she said that you will do or you won't do or anything like that. So it's like okay. for example. It's like when, uh, when we, we say in El Salvador, it rains a lot. She says in El Salvador, rains a lot. So we okay. don't change that one because it's a general truth. But if we say, she says it's raining right now, uh, we need to change. It's true. She said she wa she say it was raining. OK. Because it's in the moment. Yeah. So that is the main okay. difference, OK? Yeah. Thank you, teacher. Very good. Any other question, my friends? Anybody? Yeah. Move your back. Okay, so the time has come to practice. Let's see if this is true. We're going to practice first here, okay? So there are some exercises that we're going to change into reporter speech. Number one, he works in a bank, okay? So she said. What do you think? He said that he works in a bank. Very good. Yeah, it's a general truth. We don't change that one. Nice. So the first uh, one is Which good. form sounds more formal, teacher? Which form sounds more formal? You seen she told me that or don't use it that? The, the thing is that, do you remember in the video they were saying that we are going to use tell when you mention the person that he says to. So she told me, she told the person, she told the cashier to do something. So in this case, it's going to be only she says or he says. 
but it's not that it's formal or not formal. It's different. Okay. It's not right, I I teacher. It. He told he told me to work in a bank. No, in this case, it's not good because uh, it's something that you don't need to do anything about it. So it's it's better to say he says or she said she said uh, he works in bank that he works okay. in bank. Okay. Good. Number two says, Julie doesn't like going out much. Aha, uh -huh. how is it going to be the report speech here? She say she doesn't like it, going out much. Aha, uh -huh. she say she, she say Julie doesn't like, what do you think? Julie, she, she's, she say Julie didn't didn't like like going. Okay, yeah. If it's a general mm -hmm. truth, we can say Julie doesn't like. But I I believe it's better to say Julie didn't like going out much, because it's something that she said, right? It's just something that she mentioned. Good. Number three, I don't have a computer. How is going to be that one? He said he doesn't have a computer. He said he doesn't have a computer. Was uh, what other people says? Yeah, we can say that because it's a, a general truth. It's true. He doesn't have a computer. In this case, teacher, when the general truth is when the there is a fact or evidence that the the sentence is. 100 right that is correct so that is like a general truth actually this okay. one can be in both ways it might be correct uh he say uh, he didn't have a computer it's also it's also correct because it's possible that he's looking for a computer to purchase a computer so then it's not going to be a general truth so that depends sometimes in the context both okay. ways yeah. for me is correct right uh this one is different they never arrive on time how is it going to be that one? They say they never arrive on time. They say, okay, or he say they never arrived. Arrived with ED, you say? Or not ED? Right. Arrived on time. Okay, what other people says? Well, actually, this is a general truth. This is only a general truth. So it's going to be, uh, he said they never arrive in present on time because it's something that always happens, a fact, okay? Number five, it says, we often meet friends in London at the weekend. Ah, let's see this one. Is for thinking these things, right? <laughs> okay, often is also an adverb of frequency. So it's something that it, it might be a fact as well. So in this case, it might be we often, uh, he say we often meet or that we often meet friends in London at the weekend. So it's going to be the same because it's not going to be a change on that one. Number six, David doesn't have any children. That is a fact as well. Definitely. So how is it going to be? If it's a general truth? He said David doesn't have any children. That is it. He said uh, David doesn't have any children. That is it. good. Number seven, I don't go to the gym very often. Uh, that is another general question, uh, general situation. How is it going to be? He said he doesn't go to the gym very often. That is true. Very good. He say he doesn't go to the gym very often. If he's looking for a gym, then it might change because it's not going to be a fact anymore. 
Okay, that depends on the context as well. Okay, number eight. Lucy owns three flats in the city. That is a fact. That is something that is a general truth. So how is it going to be? I don't remember this own. Own is when you are the owner, when you have something. It's a possession thing. And flats in England is like a department. It's an apartment actually, not apartment, an apartment. So who's gonna be that one? She said that Lucy found three flats in the city. That is it, it's the general truth, very good. Number nine, I never get up early on Sundays. Another fact, general truth. Teacher, in the use, the never or always, it's not possible that the expression of the exaggeration. It's possible. I mean, depends on the context that you use. Yeah, that might be possible, yeah. Uh, because I mean, sometimes you wake up early, right? But anyways, you can express that. So the expression is correct. So this is a general, a general truth. How's it gonna be? You told me, teacher. Uh, no, we're going to use uh, say it out. So it's going to be, um, she said she never gets up early on Sundays. Gets, because we've changed I for she, right, for her. Number 10, Jill meets her boyfriend at the cinema every Friday night. Every Friday night. So that is a general truth. How is it going to be? Again, it's going to be she sells, or she said Jill meets her boyfriend at the cinema every Friday night. It's going to be just like that. Let's move on. Um, actually, we're not going to continue with this one. We're going to go to another exercise. Okay, now we are going to check into that one. So Jane left the party early. You are Okay, so Jane left the party early. Mm -hmm. Jane has, no, Jane has left the party early. Very good. So it's going to be, well, I don't remember if this is, she said, let's enter that. Jane, okay, Jasmine said, had left the party early. Everybody agrees on this one? What do you think, my friends? ¿Qué dice el público? Okay, Jasmine, we believe in you. Let's check. Okay, let's show. He told me. Well, but it's correct. The tense is fine, okay? It's because I enter he or, I mean, these are like that, but it's correct. Had left me. So very good, Jasmine. That is the important part here. So number two, I didn't go out at the weekend. How is going to be that one? Look at that. That is negative. I didn't go out at the weekend. So how is going to be the change? Anybody? Hello. I'm sorry, teacher. In the first example, the, the right answer, the whole, he told me. 
Uh, in this mm -hmm. case, it's possible both ways. But remember that in these kinds of exercise, like in the platform, if you enter one word that is not the correct one, uh, or if uh, it's a change depending on the directions, it's not going to show the correct one. But in this case, it's possible to, to use said or told. Both might be possible. Okay. okay. So maybe the most important part here is the tense, how we are going to change, change the tense. So that is the most important. So I didn't go out at the weekend. How is it going to be that? Mm. She said that in this case, in this sentence, the pronoun she or he. Uh, yeah, you tell me something. If it's not correct, we're going to clarify, okay? But you yes. just tell me something. As I was telling you, the most important is the, the tense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she said she had gone. Hadn't, okay, hadn't gone. Uh, had, yeah, okay, let's hadn't, see. Hadn't, hadn't gone. Hadn't gone, gone. very good. The weekend. Very good. So this is the important part, mm -hmm. hadn't gone, Sorry, the gone. verb. That is the one what we the really care about. Now. Very nice. Uh, say that start with he told. Yeah, maybe we can we can enter something like that. So just in case, right? We can say he told, he told, and continue like that. So just for us to check the but the important part is the grammar. That is the most important. So number three, he didn't like chocolate as a child. Why? I don't know. How is it gonna be? He said that he ha hadn't liked chocolate as a child. Okay, very good. Let's check. Very good. Hadn't liked. So it sounds strange, but remember that this is reported speech. So if we follow the rules, everything is fine. And as Rose said, we can use he told me, he, and then continue, right? That will be it. Okay, they visited Japan. How is it going to be this one? He told me that they had visited Japan. Very good. They had visited Japan. Let's check. Very good. They had visited Japan. So this is it. Good. Number five says she didn't buy the dress. How is it going to be that one? She said uh, she hadn't bought the dress. Hadn't bought the dress. Let's check. Very good. Hadn't bought the dress. That is it. Good. So you see, if you practice, it's very easy. Why? I don't know. Aha. Uh -huh. How is it going to be this one? Hello. Mm -hmm. She said and he had traveled. 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 Had, have right. been? No, have been, teacher. Um, no. no. Had traveled. Had uh, traveled. He told me, he told me, he told me he had traveled. Yeah, had traveled. Remember that uh, simple past goes to past yeah. Uh, perfect. Yeah. Okay, he met his girlfriend in a cafe. That's good. So, how is going to be that one? He told me he had. He has been, met his girlfriend in a cafe. Okay. Um, yeah, he told me he had met. Had. Had, had, had met. Yeah. Ah, yes. Had met. It's yeah, that person. is the rule. Yeah. So, the, here is it. Had met. Okay. That is the important part. Number eight. David didn't arrive until 10 o'clock. How is it going to be?
He said that David hadn't arrived until uh, 10 o'clock. Very good, that is it. David hadn't arrived. So that is it. You can see if you practice, it's going to be very easy. Number nine, uh, we went to the park to have a picnic. How's it gonna be that? She told me we have gone to the park to have a picnic. Very good. They had gone. Here is it. They had gone to the park to have a picnic. Nice. Number 10. We ate Chinese food when we walked home. This is an interesting one. Anybody here? Hello? Is it anybody out there? Pink Floyd. He told me I forgot he it. had it. He had it. Oh, we had forgot it. Uh, we are in number 10, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am sorry. It's me. It's me. We have it. We had eaten. 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 Yeah. Uh -huh. oh we had God. eaten Chinese food. Chinese food. Then we walked home. Huh. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Look at this. He told me they had eaten Chinese yeah. food. Mm -hmm. Then they walked home. Okay. The bird Good. is in prison. Yeah, so yeah. all these verbs are in simple past yes. and everything is going to be changed to past, past perfect. perfect yes. Yeah, so she forgot to bring the cities. How is it going to be that one? She said that she had forgotten to bring the cities. Perfect, very good, Jasmine. So he told me she had forgotten. Here is the important part, had forgotten to bring the cities. Good. I didn't like the food in the restaurant. So how is gonna be this? He told me I hadn't hadn't liked the food. Okay, he hadn't Light. light, very good. Light. Light. light, Let's check into that one. That is it, hadn't liked. Light. So you can yeah. see it's piece of cake. He didn't take a shower, why? <laughs> okay, so how is gonna be that? He told me that he told me he hadn't taken a shower. Good. He told me he hadn't taken a shower. Let's taken check. Here is it. Nice. Yeah. Taking a shower. Number 14. I worked until six. How's it going to be? He told he had worked until six. Had worked until six, very good. So he told me he had worked. He did say it, good. Number 15, we went to Paris for the weekend. Really good. How they had gone to he the told, Paris. Uh -huh. He told me, he told me we had gone to Paris for the okay. weekend. They, they had gone. They. Oh, because yes. we changed this one. Yes. Right? They had gone to Paris for the weekend. Yeah, like here, right? That we go to Paris every weekend. Number 16, the plane left at seven. How is it going to be? He told 
He told, he told me the plane had left at seven. Perfect. He told me the plane had left at seven. Number 17, who's going to be? Uh -huh. He said that he had come to London in 2004. Had come. Very good. Had come. This is it. Very good. Okay, let's change the tense. So now this is present continuous. Okay, we're working. How's going to be that one? We are working. We are working. Uh, hmm. They they were working. We're working. Good. He told me they were working. That is it. They were because we're going to change present to past. Good. Number two. She's coming to the party. Nice. She said that she was coming to the party. Was coming to the party. That is it. It's very easy. He told me she was coming to the party. Was coming. So remember that we need to change that one, okay? She's talking on the telephone. Uh-huh. How's it going to be number three? He told me she was talking on the telephone. She was talking on the telephone. Good. Here is it. She was talking on the telephone. Number four, Lucy is reading a book in front of the fire. Lucy oh, that is nice. was reading a book in front of the fire. Very good. He told me Lucy was reading a book in front of the fire. Oh, well, here's it. Lucy was reading. Good, nice, perfect. I'm not going out. Why? Let's go to the party. How's it gonna be? told me he wasn't out. Very good. He wasn't. He wasn't. Went. Went? Mm, no. no. Wasn't. No. Was. no. No. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah. it's the verb to be. Yeah. So it's going was. to be, he told me he wasn't going. We are not visiting Paris during our trip. Why? So who's going to be that one? He told me they weren't visiting Paris. Weren't, very good. So he told me they weren't yeah, visiting my news. <laughs> the trip, yeah. So I'm listening to my new CD. How is it going to be that? He told me, he told me he was listening his new CD. Very good. He was he, listening to he, the news. He told me. He, to his, okay. Yeah. So this is present perfect. Let's see. She has visited Paris three times, just like me. <laughs> he told me she had visited. She told me. She. Yeah, you're right, actually. Had visited. Mm -hmm. She told me she had visited. Very good. Number two, she has read War and Peace. How is going to be that one? War and Peace is a very large book, but it's nice. He said that he had read War and Peace. Had read. Very good. He said he had read. War and Peace, a long book. I haven't seen Julie for ages. Where are you, Julie? Come back to my life. Uh-huh, how is it gonna be? Mm. 
-hmm. She say uh, he had hadn't seen Julie for age. That is true. She says she hadn't seen Julie for ages. Good. She hasn't been to school this week. She went to the beach. So how is it gonna be that? She said he said he hadn't been to school this week. Very good. Hadn't been to school this week. That is it. Nice. Number five. We haven't seen the Lord of the Rings. Why? It's a good movie. How is it gonna be? They told me sir, that they weren't. In this case, it's hadn't. Hadn't I mean, seen. Hadn't yeah, seen. Hadn't. yeah, because oh. remember that when we have uh, ah, yes. present perfect yes. here, we're going to change into uh, past perfect. So that is the rule, okay. past perfect. So as you say, they hadn't seen the Lord of the Rings. I don't know why. Let's change one more. Future simple, that is very easy. I'll go to the cinema later, how's it gonna be? I will not go. Mm, I? I will not. Go to that. I yeah. will not. Mm. No, it's not will not. I will then go. I will. I will is fine, but it's not negative. So it's going to be. Ah. I, yeah, I will go. I will go. So she says she will go to the cinema later to see. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Yeah, I want to see that one this weekend. Okay, so number two, we'll meet the children at six. How is it gonna be that? We will meet the children at six. Very good. So it's gonna be, she say they will meet the children at six, world. So this is kind of easy. As you can see, as uh, Anna Salmi was saying before, we need to check what is the tense in the direct speech and then change it. That's the only thing that we need to do. She'll be late. So how is it going to be that? She'll she be, late. be late. She will she be, late. be late. So she says mm -hmm. she will be late, right? Mm -hmm. That is it. She says she will be late. Very easy. Lucy will definitely come. Very good for Lucy. Mm -hmm. Lucy will. Lucy will. Yeah. She say Lucy will definitely come. We expect you, Lucy, come. I will stop smoking on Tuesday. Why on Tuesday? Why not today? Okay. So how's it going to be? I will stop smoking on Tuesday. I will stop smoking on Tuesday. Why? I don't know. Uh, let me check here. She said she will stop smoking on Tuesday. Good. John won't do it. John wouldn't. Sure. Okay. She says she John wouldn't. Good. She say good. Perfect. We're getting there. She says John wouldn't do it. Nice. They won't be able to arrive early. How's it gonna be that? They won't be able to arrive early. Wouldn't very good. Mm -hmm. She say they wouldn't be able to arrive early. Mm. Before we finish, we're going to do one more practice. Okay, maybe two or two minutes. We're gonna do this. It's going to be very easy. I'm going to say something, and you are going to change that into indirect speech. For example, and you are going to say something like that. He say the teacher. Okay, he say the teacher, and then the report speech. For example, um, I'm working tomorrow. The teacher said that he 
um, that he was working tomorrow. Perfect, good. Touchdown. Nice, that is it. That is it. The teacher said that he was working. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, if I say, um, if I say, um, I'm, I'm trying to think something that is not that complicated. For example, I, I came early. I came early. How is it going to be that? The teacher said he, he had come early. Very good. Amazing. That's mm -hmm. it. If I say I have eaten in that restaurant. The teacher said that he had eaten in that restaurant. Had eaten, good, amazing, very good. If I say, I can play the guitar. The teacher said he could play guitar. Very good, amazing. This is fantastic. So you see, you need to pay attention and change. That is it. That's the only thing that you need to do. I know that at the beginning was like complicated, right? So this is for this, this is for this. But the only thing that you need to do is to pay attention and say, oh, this is present. I'm going to change it to past. Oh, this is present perfect. I'm going to change it to past perfect. Oh, this is will. I'm going to change it with will. Oh, this is me. I'm going to change it with might. That's the only thing that you need to remember. Good, my friends. Is there any questions before we finish? I really like this class. Nice. So I'm going to check the attendance. Ada Patricia Linares Galdames. Present teacher. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Carmen Jasmine Lopez Martinez. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdamez. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Present. Good. Jose Ernesto Osorio Morán. Present teacher. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here teacher. Good. Osmin Baire Solorzano. Present teacher. Good night. Good night. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Good. Sandra Carolina Romero Ramirez. I'm here, teacher. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramirez. Present teacher. Good night. Good night. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Good. Walter Mauricio Morales Araujo. Present. Good. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Present teacher. Good. Uh, Wilfredo Guardado Rivera. Present teacher. Good. Zulma Rosabra López García. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de María Carballo Ugarte. Present. Good night. Good night. Nelson Edgardo Sanchez Ramirez. Ana Michelle Guevara Sanchez. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltran. Present. Good. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be here with you tonight. This was a rainy night of grammar. See you tomorrow. Have a good night. If you want, if you have the time, practice. Check the grammar tomorrow so you understand better. Practice some exercises and use the grammar. See you tomorrow. Have a good night. Dream in English. Thanks, Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.
Thank you, see you tomorrow. Good night. See ya tomorrow. Hello, Anaselmi, how are you? Hi, teacher. Very good Hi. to be with you again, that's nice. Yeah, um, I am tired and I feel um, sick because the last Monday I have the application my four uh, vaccine. vaccine. Oh my goodness, really? <laughs> in this case, I have effect. So in the other times you didn't have any effect? No, no. Maybe it's possible my immune in, immune system is right. Did yeah, you? yeah, immune system. Immune system is maybe lower compared to the three times three times ago. <laughs> Sometimes also the vaccines they have different effects. Um, the good yeah. thing is that you know why this is happening, and um, well, I hope tomorrow you are feeling better. No, in this afternoon, I felt better. Very good. But it, it was a surprise for me because the last time, but because I, I have a work, a lot of work, I, I forget <laughs> my, <laughs> my, my pain. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that <laughs> happens when you are so into something you you forget about other things but yeah. when the body reacts of course there is something that but i hope you feel better it takes a lot of water thank and you teacher. also yeah. intake also some pills in case you have some pain of course yes acetaminophen acetaminophen yeah, acetaminophen, yeah. Acetaminophen. that would yes. be good and uh, how do you feel now in the english class how do you feel with that you're moving on honestly the the report speech in my mind uh, has a lot of rules and the the basic rules I have present but in this class in this class I identify the other rules but I need more practice because in in a specific part, I feel confused, confused. Um, but in, in, when the examples, uh, it's clear the, the basic rules, but it's more complicated when put the other. Uh, but I understood, teacher, that the reported speech is um, is frequently the use. Yeah, it's very frequently. I mean, that is mm -hmm. something that whenever you are saying, I mean, that is in any conversation that you want to say something that other person say, and that is mm -hmm. something that happens a lot. So it's not necessary both the gossip. No, no, it's not gossip. No I say that one. I say that one because sometimes what happens is that some people they don't understand, right? And yes, then, but it's for transfer the the information the other person in the conversation yeah. understand that. And the, but it's very important the the good structure because understood that. It's not only the for grammatical. It's for for how do you say for darnos a entender or yeah. Do you say the yeah for the other people to understand better what we want? Yes, to better exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, for me, it, it was new. The important because it's not only the, the grammatical form, it's because it's necessary to, to for, 
for a good expression the the idea that is true i mean if mm -hmm. you express something that is not correct i mean other person is going is going to understand something totally different so mm -hmm. that is exactly as pronunciation i mean if you go you go and see and say let's go to the ship everybody's going to say ship ship or ship where mm -hmm. we're going to go so it's the same if you if just the structure is not correct the person is going to understand something different so it's important it's possible that the the other countries when you speak with the other non-native non-native english maybe it's possible <laughs> yeah, i express the idea but understand that the native english ah, no. yeah that is true <laughs> so but it's very good that you got the idea and that you are now more clear uh, we are mm -hmm. going to continue practicing and checking some other things mm -hmm. and um, maybe that is the problem with with the classes of english that we see this one two times and we go to other topic but you need to continue right you need to continue yeah practice. Yeah, the practice the practice the practice is very important right. yes but in the specific moment in during the class i feel frustrating <laughs> because <laughs> i got a lot a lot of rules for the report speech but and i understood that why it's necessary to to know to apply the right form during the conversation that is it's easier for me when i write okay but so you are visual more, yeah but it's more difficult when i listen yeah actually I that is yeah and as i was mm -hmm. saying in the class sometimes when you're speaking with somebody that is speaking very fast then you need to get the idea and understand what they're talking right but anyways uh, it's very good that you you check that one and you understood and as i was telling you you just need to continue practicing and everything will yeah. be fine no thank you for your explanation in my case i for me is it was clear okay perfect mm -hmm. thank you mm -hmm. Okay, and tell me, uh, it was a pleasure to be with you. I hope you feel better tomorrow. Uh, sleep you. very well and see you. Bye-bye now. See you, teacher. Good evening. Good evening.